Welcome back, guys, uh, to the Jake Ellenbogen channel. I'm Jake Ellenbogen, and this is my Falcon and Winter Soldier uh, final episode, episode six, recap and reaction video. Um, it's going to be mainly a reaction. I'm going to do less of a recap. It was a, a shorter episode that tied a lot together. So we're not going to go frame by frame, scene by scene like we were doing before, um, because I think, you know, I want to focus more on the future and, and what this, this leads to. And, and also talking about just in general, um, what this series, you know, how I felt this series went. So altogether, if you asked me if this is better than WandaVision, I don't think it's fair because I think they're completely different uh, TV shows. You know, you look at the series with WandaVision and they focus more on story. They focus more on dialogue. When you look at Falcon Winter, Sol uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, they focus more on uh, action. Um, there was a lot of dialogue in this past episode, but they focus a lot on action. And there is a big social justice message as well in this uh, that they really wanted to push. And I don't think they stepped on any toes in doing so. I thought they did a nice job while not ruining the story or, you know, overshadowing the story. I thought, you know, they wanted to hit on social justice issues that they believe, you know, are in the country. Um, and of course, you know, as a content creator, you have the right to put out anything you believe. And as you know, this isn't a political channel by any stretch, but I thought they did a nice job of, you know, putting their point out there without coming across as it, that was the whole purpose of the show. I don't think they ruined the show in doing that. I just wanted to point that out. But going into this, this episode, well, we kick things off immediately. We see Sam Wilson in that Captain America Falcon uh, winged suit and I got to say, suit's awesome. Suit is awesome. It's Wakandan. It's going to be made of vibranium. Um, it's a really cool suit. It, it looks really good on, on TV. Um, it definitely worked well. Uh, you get a nice seeing him, you know, fighting Batroc the Leaper. You get, uh, you know, of course, him, um, you know, the helicopter scene, him rescuing. Uh, you get, you know, Bucky Barnes, who... Uh, you know, is on his motorcycle and, you know, is fighting some Flag Smashers. Um, the cool thing is we get a John Walker, uh, re you know, basically he comes back and John Walker obviously could have been more of the vengeful guy. And, you know, I kind of felt like that's where he was going to go. Uh, but it's almost like, you know, poetry in motion. He sees Bucky and they team up and it's not anything where... I felt, and this is why John Walker to me in this episode is very likable because it's not to me like anything I felt like where he was fighting for himself. I feel like he truly was trying to do the right thing. And it ultimately shows something that maybe they kind of lacked during this show. I don't feel like they really hit home enough how good of a person John Walker was. And it almost seemed more like his accolades were all about the recognition and he wasn't, it wasn't driven home enough. Like he was kind of like a Steve Rogers who did things for other people. It was more hit on the head, like as if he's doing it for the recognition, the fame and because, you know, he wants to look good. So I thought they did a nice job in this episode in particular of kind of having him put his ego aside and, you know, Carly says something that, it, you know, I didn't mean to kill your friend. He didn't matter. And then I think that really sets off John Walker. But Walker does a good job of not going on this rampage and bloodshed and, uh, you know, turning into just, you know, fighting for, you know, vengeance. Um, instead, he stays, you know, calm, cool, collected, um, you know, fights the Flag Smashers with Bucky. They actually don't end up killing uh, you know, I think there's about four of them. They uh, end up tricking them with their own cell phone pinging. Uh, so I thought I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, there's a you know a cool little quote as well uh, that Captain uh, well Captain America John Walker brings up. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. We do get a huge reveal here, uh, which a lot of people on the internet got right. I thought it was almost too easy to give this. I was not expecting this, so it worked out well for me. Um, Emily Van Camp's character, Sharon Carter, 
who I was very happy to see in this series, ends up being the power broker. And I wasn't expecting that. I know some people were. I was not. I thought it was Thunderbolt Ross. I thought she was doing this whole thing uh, to get a pardon from Thunderbolt Ross. And that's not to say that maybe Thunderbolt Ross is just, uh, he, he's ahead of her in rank. Um, you know, we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit later on in this video. But um, yeah, I was not expecting that. And Carly knew that was the power broker. And, um, you know, we, we get Carly shooting Emily Van Camp's uh, Sharon Carter after Sharon Carter kills Batroc the Leaper um, in a little bit of a showdown. You know, Sam really... Sam, they were trying to hit home on the point that he's a great person and he's perfect for the Captain America mantle because he doesn't want to kill Carly. He's trying to do everything he can to to avoid conflict. And I thought they did a nice job of hitting on that point where, let's be honest here, Sam doesn't want to, you know, resort to uh, killing anyone. Um, you know, he's trying to find the best in Carly and sees, you know, he's trying to help her, sees what she's fighting for, and he knows that it's, you know, it's the right thing she's fighting for, but she's fighting for it in the wrong way. And, <clears throat> you know, I think the Sharon Carter thing is really interesting because at no point does Bucky or uh, Sam pick up on the fact that, you know, she's the power broker. So, you know, it could have been a little bit coincidental, but, you know, or maybe she was really just being that methodical and, you know, was able to hide it well. Um, so, you know, I like that Sharon was a big part of this episode. Obviously, she was the power broker, so that had to happen. I like that John Walker showed up. I like that, you know, Winter Soldier had his moment where he could rescue people out of a burning, uh, you know, a burning vehicle. Um, there were a lot of things I liked. Sam Wilson's uh, Captain America wingsuit is awesome. I was hoping we would get a, uh, you know, a White Wolf um, debut, but I wasn't expecting it. I think that'd be more Black Panther 2. I, I don't think that, you know, Bucky is going to take up the mantle of White Wolf until Black Panther 2. But, um, yeah, there was a lot of, of stuff in this episode, and it was one of the shorter episodes of the series, so they really had to kind of throw it in there, pack it in there, and I thought they did a nice job of that. Um, there wasn't as much action as I expected. Uh, the fights didn't really go down the way I expected. I definitely didn't expect Carly to end up getting shot by um, is Sharon Carter. Uh, so that was something. But nonetheless, uh, like this episode a lot. It's a good conclusion. The end credits, there is a mid credit scene. So if you haven't seen that, I'm giving you a chance to go back and see that. Uh, I should have probably told you that there's a spoiler alert throughout this entire video, but if you clicked on this video, then I think you know that I'm about to spoil the entire episode, so make sure that you've watched it if you haven't. Um, so before this mid credit scene, this is your chance to back out. Okay, so mid credit scene, we get Sharon Carter getting pardoned because as earlier in the show... Sam Wilson basically says, you know, a promise is a promise or, you know, like he, he said he would get her pardoned. And so he does that. But you're probably thinking at the end of the show, like, what the hell? What, what happened to Sharon? Well, she gets pardoned by the U.S. government. She also gets her job back. And this is an interesting twist because no one knows she's the power broker. And as soon as she leaves the courthouse on the hearing, she basically starts talking about we have access. Now we have access to all the all these weapons and top secret tech and all of that. And I don't know how, who she's on the phone with. It could be Thunderbolt Ross, but I don't know because I feel like if that was Thunderbolt Ross, he already has access to all those weapons. I mean, he was, I think he was the Secretary of Defense at one point. So I don't know if he still is. So I, I don't know if that's him. Um, but it sure begs the question. We also get a scene before the ending uh, for John Walker becoming U.S. agent because Madam Hydra, who I don't know if they're actually going to call her Madam Hydra in this episode or, or this TV show or the movies. I don't know. Um, 
but you know, she basically gives him a suit. He tries it on. He comes out and he's wearing it and he says it's pretty much the same thing, just black. She says exactly, you're a US agent. At this point you have to feel for for John Walker because you you've clearly seen at this point he has you know moved on from the poor, you know, the poor judgment that he made uh to kill Nico, one of the flag smashers in episode 5 or episode 4. Um so you know he's moved on from that and you could tell he's not a bad guy and he's really excited and he feels like he's doing the right thing. He doesn't know that that's Madam Hydra though. He doesn't know that he's about to be fighting the wrong fight. And, uh, I do feel for him, his character in general, uh, his, like I said before, his wife is goals. And the reason I say that is because she's literally still by his side. A lot has gone down and she seems to be a true partner with him she's stuck by him through thick and thin um even after watching him murder somebody on you know a probably a live stream or some sort um yeah i mean i i think you know that's definitely something that needs to be said and also going back you know after the the four flag smashers are captured and they're being sent to the raft they're blown up um by somebody <laughs> initially this guy he's an older guy I thought this was Kingpin the way it was filmed because it, like we didn't see the guy's full face until you know the scene finally panned up because it moved up and it was looking at like his suit it's like the bottom of his suit and I was like oh my god did they actually do it did they bring K Kingpin in the MCU and I don't think that's Kingpin <laughs> I hope that's not Kingpin to not have the guy who played Kingpin in Daredevil not reply reprise his role would be criminal but we get that, and then um, you know they report that on the news. The four flag smashers were killed in a car bombing accident. We then pan over to, uh, ironically, the raft, which is where Zemo is being held. Zemo has kind of a smirk, a smile, whatever you want to call it, and then goes back and, and lays back down on his bed in his prison cell. Um, so I don't know what the future holds for the Thunderbolts, but... They teased the hell out of it, and we didn't get Thunderbolt Ross mentioned once in this. We didn't get to see him. Um, we did get U.S. Agent. You know, that is somebody that we got, but that is something to keep in mind. You know, we didn't see Taskmaster. Um, we didn't see uh, Yelena Belova. Um, we, we got Zemo a little bit, but he was in prison, so it's not like, you know, John Walker didn't go to prison. So it's going to be a modified take, I think, on the Thunderbolts. And we might not even be close to it yet. This could be the U.S. agent storyline with Madam Hydra. And then eventually the Thunderbolts come in later on. Like, we don't know how long they're going to take. This is something that's been building up for years with Thunderbolt Ross, who's essentially been behind it all. I think we're going to learn a lot more in the Black Panther movie. Or not Black Panther. Well, we'll learn a lot in the Black Panther, but Black Widow, uh, which comes out in July. And we will have a video on that for sure. Cannot wait for that. Um, so I think, you know, there's a lot of things that went on said uh, that will be, it's weird because it takes place before Infinity War. And this is way after Infinity War. Um, but I feel like a lot of questions might be answered in that Black Widow movie uh, about Ross, about the uh, Hulk serum, which, you know, makes him Red Hulk, about the Thunderbolts what have you. Um, but we will see on that. But overall, this is a really, really good show. Highly recommend it. Um, I can't say it's better than WandaVision, just like I can't say WandaVision is better than Falcon Winter Soldier. I do appreciate that it wasn't hyped up too much. Um, you know, I will say episode five definitely was. Um, but, you know, I don't think the, the show as a whole wasn't hyped up too much. Um, we didn't get Omega Red, which was, you know, like, I think someone confirmed that Omega Red was going to be in it. We didn't get that. We didn't get any X-Men reveals. We got kind of nods to X-Men with Madripoor location being revealed in the MCU. Um, you know, it was more kind of like, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge type of deal. But we didn't get any of those, you know, big reveals. Um, we got the Madam Hydra cameo, which then she appeared in the next episode and she's going to be a huge factor, uh, moving forward. 
Um, we got a new character in John Walker, who's going to be U.S. agent. We got Battlestar, who was killed, unfortunately. Um, we got a tease of the Young Avengers, because Patriot, Eli Bradley, Eli, uh, or, yeah, um, you know, Isaiah Bradley's, uh, yeah, e Eli Bradley. So, Eli Bradley is Patriot in the comics. Um, so, we got that. And then on top of that, um, we get Sam Wilson finally becoming Captain America, which was teased at the end of Endgame, um, fully taking over the mantle. Um, we get Isaiah Bradley finally getting his word and his name out there in the Captain America exhibit, no less. I love that scene. And we get in a redemption arc with Winter Soldier. Uh, ultimately, I do feel like they kind of they sold him a little short. I know it was Falcon Winter Soldier, but sometimes it seemed like it was Falcon and, you know, partly Winter Soldier, you know, um, obviously that wouldn't make for a great title, but I do hope we get more Winter Soldier and Black Panther. I just don't feel like it was truly like a half and half. I felt like this was truly starring Sam Wilson and, you know, they made Winter Soldier kind of the secondary star, but not really, they weren't co-stars in my opinion. And uh, Sebastian Stan is incredible, so I hope they really do him justice by having him more uh, in the you know the movies moving forward. Will we get a season two of this? It ended with credits saying Captain America and Winter Soldier, so who knows? I, I wouldn't mind that. Um, I would rather them call it Falcon Winter Soldier season two to avoid confusion, but maybe we'll get a whole different project. I don't know. Maybe that's what they were teasing. Who knows? But all in all, really good TV show. Um, I'm excited for the future of the MCU. You know, I know there's people out there that would say these are C-list characters. We're really talking up Sam Wilson's Falcon. We're really talking about up Winter Soldier. I'm like, well, yeah, because when you have guys like Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan playing them, it works. Maybe in the comics it didn't, but here it does, and it's here to stay. So, um, really enjoyed this. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, we will be doing more videos moving forward, but all in all, I can give this a resounding yes. This definitely succeeded. I look forward to, um, well, I look forward to June because I think the Loki TV series is going to be the best of all of them, and I'm very excited for Tom Hiddleston. And Owen Wilson, for that matter. Um, but on top of that, I'm, I'm excited. In July, we're going to get Black Widow. We got the Shang-Chi trailer that came out. I probably should have made a video on. Um, and then we're going to get Eternals, Venom. And, you know, recently, I'll, I'll even hit on the fact there's news that now Spider-Man is going to be, uh, you know, they have that joint stream deal that just happened with Disney and Sony. Um, and that could be huge. That could add Spider-Man to the Disney plus universe because <laughs> the Marvel universe exists totally, but like he couldn't at before then he couldn't come on to the Disney plus platform. So we'll see with that. I do feel like, you know, with those two companies, they don't have to announce all of the, you know, all of the details in that deal. So, I think one day you're going to see Venom show up and everyone's going to be shocked. I think Michael Morbius could show up. Um, but you guys let me know, what are your theories following this TV show? Okay, because now things are going to get interesting. We're going to get into Hawkeye later on in the year, Miss Marvel. Um, and then, of course, we know the Multiverse of Madness uh, and Spider-Man 3, I believe, have all finished up um, shooting. So, again... Hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you hear. You can follow me at JK Bogan on DTSN. And, um, you know, as always, uh, this video is brought to you by Manscaped. You can go over to manscaped.com and type in promo code JKB and get 20% off and free shipping off your manscaped.com order. All right, guys, you guys take care and we'll talk to you soon.